morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today we have on a very special guest. We're bringing in Alex Kessler. Hello, Alex. Hello. How are you? Now, Alex, tell us a little bit about your history with Magic, how long have you been playing, and what exactly is it that you do in the Magic world? Yeah, so uh, I've been playing officially since Portal Original, uh, or Tempest, that era. My dad worked in the toy industry, and he knew some of the old school Wizards of the Coast people because they like shared a floor in New York in the New York toy building, and they gave him a bunch of free stuff, and he showed up and was like, here's free toys. And I was like, great, I'll try playing this. And then I played Magic. As far as content creation goes, uh, I created this show called Top Decking because when I had a college, I wanted to make TV shows shows and then that led into me starting the MMcast podcast which was used to be the Masters of Modern podcast uh, and that grew to a YouTube channel and we used to do stuff with Jimmy and Josh from the Command Zone and um, now we do live streams of Commander every week, and so we just do a bunch of Magic content all around. Yeah, and they're a great crew of content creators. Definitely go check their stuff out. The Masters of Modern, or MMcast as it's now known, show has been around for a while and it's kind of a staple, I think, in the Magic community. But today we've got something a little bit different. One of Alex's passions is writing quick questions about magic. Do you want to talk about this for a second, Alex? What exactly are these? Me and Ben, like, who, who's my co-host, Ben has this whole history of kind of doing these trivia shows and these kinds of, we even did a trivia show with you at uh, Magic Fest Vegas last year. Introducing third, we have Team Size Matters, Gavin the Bear Haymaker Van v, and Matt the Cerebral Assassin Tamer. One of my favorite things to do beyond that on kind of like that game show world is I like arguing about nonsense. So for the Command Fest online about four weeks ago, we did this whole panel and at the end we did a lightning round of wacky questions and it ended up being a blast. Yeah, this should be a lot of fun and I really don't even know what kind of questions are going to be asked, so I'm looking forward to it. Play along at home, see what your answers would be and post them in the comments below. All right, so here we go. Nonsense lightning round questions. Let's do it, Alex, kick us off. What was your first commander and does that commander order fish, steak or the vegan option at a wedding. Oh, oh hold on, I, ha I have it right here. Uh, here's my first commander deck I ever built. I still play it a lot today and I've kept it pretty much unchanged because I just love the deck so much and it still plays really well. If you played against me at a Magic Fest, you might've seen this before. This is my Mariki Rabaret commander deck. It's this card, not many people even know what this card does, a nice little Ice Age one. But yeah, she's fantastic. This is a commander that means a lot to me. I don't know, I think she would have ordered the fish. Why? Because she lives in Ice Age and everything is frozen over. It's hard, it's hard to raise cows in an Ice Age. It's not that hard to go ice fishing. If you were a partners with Commander, which legend would you partner with on a heist? And what are you stealing? Well, I feel like if you're going to go on a heist, you need to pick a rogue or a ninja. So the brand new Zareth San from Zendikar Rising is not a bad choice, although he did die in the trailer. So maybe not the right pick overall. I'm going to go with Haguri, the Still Wind from Kamigawa Block. The Ninja Lord, the master of ninjutsu, like seems really good at getting in places. We are stealing Squee, because Squee is awesome. I'd love to have Squee around, always cracking jokes, an immortal goblin. Now I'm not trying to go all Crovax here on people, okay? But I just feel like Squee would be a good person to have on your team. Yeah, and, and I feel like you have to steal Squee and he'll come back in a, in a future question. I think I'd pick Venser, um, being able to teleport and create portals, I feel like is a pretty useful thing stealing capability. So this one, this one's a little bit more on the like serious side. Uh, uh, when designing a magic set, what part feels the most like homework to you? We literally have an exercise called homework where like in between a meeting, someone would be like, okay, we need to design some cards outside of this meeting. Just de design 20 red commons or whatever the thing is and turn them in um, before the next meeting and then we'll look over them. So that is quite literally homework, which is like do this project and bring it back. Of course, it's also not like homework because you get to make magic cards as your homework. So that's pretty nice. Uh, which creature on Ikoria would taste the best on a sandwich? At this point, I would not feel bad about eating Yorion. I'll tell you that much. I feel like Yorion has caused me enough harm. Sorry, Yorion, but you had it coming. How big is Hedging Crab? About a zero two. <laughs> what is the average number of lands in your commander decks? 40. 40, okay. For yeah, I usually start off with 40. Sometimes I'll wiggle it up or down, but I feel like in commander you have so many sweet cards you want to cast. You want to play a land every single turn. Like literally there's there's very little more important in Commander than playing a land every turn. Most players don't play mass land destruction spells, but everything else will get blown up. So you just want critical masses of mana. And how many times have you played a game of Commander and been like, 
well, I was one mana short of doing the thing I wanted to do. And then to top it off, of course, you have all kinds of lands with cool effects. So I play a lot of cycling lands. I play a lot of bounce lands. I play a lot of um, creature lands, things that just give my mana base more robustness. How about you? I'm a 38. I more run into problems of like, how do I fit more than two basics in this deck than, than anything else? Um, but I'm also terrible at cutting cards. So just being a good, strong 38 feels like the safest way of cheating. Really, whenever I build a commander deck, the kind of two things that I think about the most are mana ramp and card draw, because those are the two resources that I'm always gonna want in the late game, and everything else will kind of come together naturally. Just give it a try, that's all I'm saying, give it a try. Just, just, give, just give it a try, you know, just 440 lands, just try it, just try it, just try it, try it, try it. One other advice, because I think I do this to myself a lot, and when this happened, this is the discussion, is um, there are cards you put in your deck that you count as a land because it could get you a land if like you really needed it to. Uh, in, in examples, if you're playing like artifact lands with uh, Enlightened Tutor, yes, that could be a land, but are you ever going to actually cast it to find a land? And if you do, do you think you're going to be doing very well? So you shouldn't count those as land drops is I guess what I'm saying. I think that's especially uh, apropos conversation right now with the Zendikar rising lands that are lands on one side and spells on the other. Are these lands you can play a spell sometimes or spells you can play as land sometimes and i think it'll be very interesting to watch limited play out to see how often people are greedy or not greedy would you rather fight one nickel bolus sized squee i told you to come back or 100 squee sized nickel bolai well i feel like it doesn't really matter how small 100 nickel boluses are they're still going to mess you up with all of their abilities so i think i have to fight the gigantic squee. I, I'm so glad you said that. That that was my answer when we asked this question on the panel and everyone else answered Nickel Bullis, the, the 100 Nickel Bulli, and I'm like, they breathe fire. 100 tiny Nickel Bulluses, unless you're banking on, this is the one argument I could see, unless you're banking on, on all 100 tiny Bulluses actually fighting each other and killing each other off in a bid for power, like that might be legit. Top three favorite planes. Okay, well, first and foremost, I gotta put a word in it for my, one of my, my favorites, Kamigawa, love this plane. I would love to go back there someday. Number two is a little more boring of a pick. I'm going to say Ravnica. It just has such a strong spot in my heart. I love the guilds. I love the factionalization. And although I know we maybe burned ourselves out on it a little bit last year with all the Ravnica sets, we'll do go back again someday, almost assuredly. This is a tough one because part of me wants to say Fiora from Conspiracy because I just love that world. I think it's a fascinating world. But I'm going to go with Kylum. I'm such a battle bond person, right? Like I worked on the set. I love Kylum as a plane. I think that this kind of sports plane is really, really interesting. And also we've only seen like a very tiny bit of the plane. We've seen Valor's Reach, the stadium really, but there's the entire rest of the plane to explore. I will say, I mean, I can't pick it in good faith yet because I'll be very curious to know what everyone thinks, but uh, Strixhaven School of Mages from next year is probably one of my favorite worlds we've made. And I am so excited for you to all see it. If you could make a cereal, which magic creature type would be your cereal mascot? Goblin O's. For sure. Every, goblins are goofy, they're fun, they've got great commercials. What's not to love? Sorry, gobos, not goblin hoes. That's ridiculous. Gobos has gotta be the cereal. Okay, just wanna get that on the record before someone in the comments types it. What type of hat is your goblin mascot wearing on the front of your box? Well, my goblin mascot is Squee, because I kidnapped him earlier. What is the most difficult card type to design? Planeswalker, absolutely. I mean, assuming that we're not counting like Scheme or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna pick Planeswalker. So much work goes into Planeswalkers because um, there's, so, there's so many knobs to balance, right? How many loyalty does it have? It's gonna have three abilities. What are the abilities? Do they go up, down, stay the same? What's the mana cost? I think maybe the two cards for me that were the hardest to design in my magic history that I spent maybe the most time on were Rowan and Will from Battle Bonds because getting two Planeswalkers had to be linked up and like have their abilities work together was so difficult and challenging. And um, we went through so many iterations on those cards. Which new hobby that you have picked up in quarantine is your favorite? Making videos. What is your least favorite standard deck of all time? One of my favorite standard formats ever was Ravnica Kamigawa block. There was a lot of fun stuff you could do, but I will say that every time you played against the Magnavore deck, you just wanted to tear your hair out, right? It was like, turn two, I have nowhere your land. Turn three, boomerang your land. Turn four, stone rain your land. Turn five, stone rain your land. Turn six, stone rain your land. Turn seven, boomerang your land. Turn eight, wildfire, lose your two lands. Turn nine, do nothing. Turn 10, do nothing. Turn 11, do nothing. Turn 12, do nothing. Oh, I drew Magnavore, you're dead. It was just, it was not, not a fun time. Which planeswalker would be best at the following activities? And there's gonna be a few and you get to pick one per. Uh, the first one is stand-up comedy. Tybalt, 
I think Tybalt would be hilarious. I feel like he would give you some jokes that definitely like are a little, little roasty sometimes. That makes sense for Tybalt, right? Got, he's got a good swagger, I think, for being on stage. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. agree. Uh, bowling. Bowling, easy. Dovin, Bon. No problem. His power is he can see the weakness and everything and like perfectly plan out his abilities. Pick and Dovin. Cooking. There's a lot of good options for cooking. I'm gonna pick Chandra, just because I feel like I would get something really spicy and well cooked. Babysitting. A Johnny might make for a really good babysitter. Like, first of all, he's a cat. Kids love cats. But also, he just seems like the kind of person who'd really take care of somebody, like following Elspeth's quest. Um, you know, like his whole his whole deal with bringing her cloak back. Like he's very, very about community. I think it has to be a white planeswalker. I mean, I could also say Gideon. Yeah, I think Gideon would like, like I have a picture in my head of him like not knowing what to do with the child that he's holding, like kind of holding it out in front of you the way like people that don't know what to do with children. Although it's very possible the best answer is someone who actually has children canonically. So maybe Teferi, Teferi actually has kids. And if your kid has to go into timeout, that's something I know Teferi can do very, very well. The, the last activity for a Planeswalker, which one's best at, is tennis. Well, I'm going to pick Samut. I guess it does depend to some extent if we're allowing like psychic powers. Because if Jace is like levitating stuff, that might be a little broken. Literally everything is allowed. Ooh, all right, all right. Well then, <laughs> is killing your opponents allowed? Because I can think of some people who'd be very apt at doing that. Nickel Bull is just blasts the other team. <laughs> right, it's like, let's play tennis. Psh, you're dead. All right, next opponent. Oh, that was easy. And that sir, is the last question for the day. That is the end of my, my list of questions. Got all your answers in on time. Um, I'll just put this into the Scantron and it looks like you got a, um, you got a 65% on the, on the test. So it's fine. Maybe next time you can maybe study a little bit more, do your homework with the questions that are made up and no one knows the answers to. Hey, you know, that, that's a passing grade on some planes. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Alex. This was a blast. I hope everyone out there had fun with these goofy questions and maybe inspire you to write your own. I'll talk with you all again soon. And in the meantime, you have fun answering absolutely ridiculous questions. You got this. All right, the second category is Colossal Dreadmaw's Dinner. Mm, so mm. what's he gonna be eating tonight? Annie, what did you bring to the table? All right, what you guys may not know is that Colossal Dreadmaw is actually a vegetarian. So I have returned to nature. It's a nice little bundle of vegetables uh, that he very much enjoys. <laughs> Believe me. Um.